This is Peyton. Peyton is doing community hours with me. And we are going to document some of who Peyton is, man, and why Peyton is with me. So part of my program, P, can I call you P? Yes, sir. Part of my program, P, is I got a big social media platform. Right? TikTok, Facebook, all this stuff. So I'm gonna be on TikTok. Sweet. So what's going on? Why are you with me? I'm here because I got into some trouble between my father and my grandparents. And despite what I have said, none of what I have reported was even really given. And I ended up locked up for about four months in a maximum security cell, being my first time ever in jail. And I'm here now doing the community service just to try to get the charges finalized, dropped, and just try to get on with my life in as peaceful fashion as possible. So, an internal family thing turned into like a ruckus? Like an altercation? Yes. Basically, the night with my grandmother and grandfather in that charge, I had initially had someone call me to threaten me to come to the house I was living at to beat me up. And, of course, I had had ten shots of whiskey that night, so I snapped. Hold on just a second. Hey, brother. Brother, you need some Narcan? Oh, I'm good. Right with that. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Good, All right, go ahead. And so my initial reaction was to basically defend myself, scream, and tell him, like, if you come to my house, I will deal with the situation, to then have my family start getting on to me for screaming which turned into a massive verbal altercation, which led to my grandfather bull rushing me, and I grabbed his wrist to prevent him from doing any sort of damage to me. Mm -hmm. And from there, the cops had shown up, questioned me, questioned everyone in the house, put me in handcuffs, and hauled me off on a battery charge on an elderly. Did... I mean, did your grandfather or anybody press charges? Did they tell the police that they wanted... No. They, they even went so far as to submit a letter to the courts asking them to have those charges dropped. And the state just kept pursuing them. Did you have a public uh, defender? An attorney? Uh, at that point in time, I had had a, an attorney... I forget what... I think it was the uh, pro Provo Hours, mm -hmm. that they call it, mm -hmm. and then later through, because <clears throat> we ended up getting a paid attorney, which is how I was able to get onto the program that I'm on. Got it. And you got 50 hours. Yes, sir. Have you done your hours anywhere else? No, sir, I have not been able to find a single place that would accept me because of the charges I have. So they took you out to the jail then? For f about three, three and a half months. What? How was that? Not fun. <laughs> not fun at all. Have you been in jail before at all, ever? No, never been arrested, never even had any run-ins with officers or the law at all. Hmm. And so, what was your thought process walking into the jail? Keep to myself, keep my mouth shut, and just try not to start any beef at all. Did you have any problems in there? I ended up with one or two people pressing me. Did what I needed to to keep myself alive. Nothing really ended up out of it. Mm -hmm. Pressing you out. Just the t 
typical, <clears throat> they are tougher than you. They're going to bully you, call you a punk, call you a bitch, and say whatever they can say to get you aggravated. And then when push comes to shove, if they can get you in a corner, they're just going like, to go after you. And how did you handle that? I just try, I try to get away from the situation as much as I possibly could, and when I needed to, I did what I had to do to defend myself. What's going on, brother? Hey, I'm a, um, I'm a non-profit, and I'm just driving around passing out Narcan. Do what? I'm a non-profit, I'm just driving around passing out Narcan. You know anybody that needs Narcan? No? No. All right. Hey. You know anybody that needs any Narcan? I'm passing out Narcan. If I'm not mistaken, this is what they use to help revive people when they have an overdose. Yeah. So, Narcan is a dispenser that that um, counters opioid overdoses. It don't only opioid, fentanyl, um, heroin, opiates. So if somebody's having an overdose, you know, you hit them with that pump in each nostril and it'll snap them right out of it and save their life. So that's a lot of what I do is I get um, a lot of this Narcan and I, I just go around passing it out to people, man, just trying to get it out on the street. Oh yeah, that definitely needs to be done more, especially in That's where I really work, you know, my office is up in Newport Ritchie, so I mean, we'll be doing a lot of that, you know, I'll give you some hours for that, just riding around, and, you know, just getting this stuff out, man. Definitely would love to do that. Yeah, just what I remember seeing, it was just god awful being in the county, I mean, the food is not fit for consumption. On top of that, even some of the way the guards will treat you is horrid. Explain that some. How did the guards treat you? Like you coming in as, as a young kid, how, how were you treated by the guards? I was, I personally, I feel like was treated a lot easier than most of the other people, especially having no one in that facility ever knowing me. A lot of the people that I saw in there that got the harsh treatment were people that have been repeat offenders where their charges were ex on the extreme end of the scale. I have seen, I actually, we all shouted the date, time, and everything knowing the cameras were on because we watched the guy get pulled out of the shower, sh shouted to get down to the floor, and when he was brought down, the guard immediately grabbed him by the neck, slammed him against the wall, and elbowed him in the ribs. And as far as we were all concerned, this guy had done nothing. Mm. What kind of impression did that leave on you? I want nothing to do with that. I do not want to be there. I do not want to have to go through that again. That... I don't think it's anything anybody should seek 